Can we talk about this project? Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sharon, and this is Plaster Shades Designs. So I purchased some plaster of Paris because I wanted to mold these flowers. And I've never done this before. I saw it somewhere and thought, oh, it's a cool idea. So let's see if we can do it. I briefly read the instructions and then decided I'd just play it by ear and put a little bit of powder into a mixing bowl. Um, I know that it said I needed cold water, so I was drinking some ice water and I decided to just use my ice water. I would say if you decide to do something like this, use a bowl that you don't mind getting rid of, or in this case, I'm using this um, plastic silicone type bowl, so I was able to clean it out fairly well. But if you use a different type of bowl, you may have to get rid of it. Anyway, I mixed the um, plaster of Paris up decided that mm, probably thin would be better than thick. And so I was trying to make sure that I got a fairly thin consistency of um, mixture. I kept stirring and adding little bits of water at a time until I was satisfied with my um, plaster mixture. I would say that it was a little thin, um, a little thicker than maybe yogurt, but thinner than a pancake batter. How about that? Um, so you can see here, one thing that I learned right away is that this stuff dries really fast. So I tried to mix small amounts. Um, I dipped my first flower leaf in and because I wasn't really sure if I should submerge the entire thing, um, I started using my gloves to help get the plaster over the leaf. Um, the other thing that I realized right away is that the way I lay this onto the drying surface is the way that the leaf or the flower would dry. So I had to kind of envision in my head how I wanted this flower to be once it was completely dry. And especially these little um, peppies here because I didn't want them to, they kept wanting to fold over and open. And I really didn't want that, but that was okay. And I just kept going ahead, um, dipping all of the mixture of flowers that I had for this idea. Then it also dawned on me that I didn't want to put these close to each other because you want to leave room for them to not dry and dry connected to each other. So I then had to figure out a way to spread them out and give them some additional room as I continued to work with the plaster, um, trying to work fairly quick so that the plaster wouldn't dry on me. I also would like to tell you that if you decide to do this and don't remove the green faux stem, that that will not um, stick to the plaster. The plaster will just chunk, chip right off of that. So you don't have to worry about it. I'm not worried about it in this project because I am going to be spray painting the entire thing a uh, good white anyway. But if you are um, going to do this on a project where you do want the stem to show, then you'll need to remove that stem. Once I had those done, I wanted to move to my roses. And I have to tell you that roses are my absolute favorite flower. I am in awe of roses. I love them. They're everywhere in my house. Um, my husband knows that I love roses except for Valentine's because guess what? They're too expensive. So he'll get them for me any other time throughout the year. But I did the exact same thing with the roses. I mixed a new batter. Um, this time I went a little bit thicker and it dried even faster, I have to tell you that. So that was fun. But anyway, I went a little bit thicker and I made sure to get um, plaster down in between each leaf so that it could have um, good coverage. Plus I wanted it to kind of look like it was um, opening and blooming instead of being a closed rose. And again, I wasn't so worried about the stem because the plaster will not stick to that plastic stem anyway. Um, and so I repeated this step for all of my roses until I had them all covered the way that I want it. And just make sure when you're doing this to really get in between each leaf petal because you want to make sure to have good coverage on your rose. These are beautiful. I think these are going to turn out right. If my mind, if I can create what's upstairs in my head here, I think this whole project is going to be really, really pretty. So we'll just keep working on it as I work 
in the plaster into each one of these stems. All right, so while those are drying, I'm coming in with a seven by 14 um, set of canvases that I picked up at Walmart and they were very inexpensive. I think they were like $3 or $4 for the pair. So that makes them $2 a piece. And um, taking my dried flowers, I'm now going to lay them out. Look at my roses. I love them. I'm now going to lay all of my flowers out onto my canvas to see how I want to position them. Now, these are dried fairly hard, but they're very fragile. So I did not realize that, right? They are very fragile. So I don't want to handle them too much because I don't want them to break. And um, some of the plaster is coming off of the plastic stems, which I kind of knew would happen. Um, and that's okay. God, this rose is so pretty to me. So I'm going to lay these out onto my canvas just to kind of give a dry run of how I want them positioned. And I want to duplicate each of the um, styles. I want to duplicate the styles on each of the canvases. So I'm trying to do each one together as I go in an effort to be able to make them as similar as possible. This was kind of fun and nerve wracking at the same time because these, like I said, this, this plaster is so delicate that I didn't want to break them. Um, and because of the way they dried, whether, um, you know, it dictated how and where I would be able to lay and place the um, flowers because some of them were flat on the edges and some of them were not. So that was kind of a, um, cool puzzle to be able to figure out like how can I get this to look and I just lay the flowers on over and over until I was happy with my final um my final look once I had my flowers in a position where I was very happy with them and this is kind of how they look <laughs> remember that was the dry run now I have to try to take these flowers off like one at a time to kind of remember where they are and using a combination of hot glue and um, E6000 for a permanent hold, I'm gonna go in and try to recreate the dry look with adding the glue and hot glue to them. And I'll do each of the two the very same way, making sure that I get a good adhesion on each one. So I was successful in keeping the original design, kind of. As I um, got to working and gluing things down, I decided that I wanted to switch it up just a little bit. And I'm very happy with that because when I turned it around, I could see places where I had gaps. And um, so doing it this way, I think that I have um, a pretty good pretty good project and it, I can see from either direction that I have good coverage but this is what it looks like as um, after I was done gluing everything together so here they both are with uh, both being glued down using a combination of again e6000 and hot glue I think that they are very pretty and I love that the rose is prominent on both of them so now let's take these outside and let's uh, use some white spray paint to make sure that we coat the entire designs with white spray paint. And I'm going to use a satin Rust-Oleum white on both. Here they are after having spray painted them and allowed them to dry completely. And now we're ready to come in. And what I wanna do at this point in time, I thought that the spray paint would be enough to give it um, a white, you know, a, a, a look of purity, clean white, but it actually just kind of made them look dull. And so what I'm gonna do now is come in with my favorite, of course, you know, I love the metallic paints. So I'm gonna come in with some of um, Fork Art metallic paint in the color of pearl white. And I'm also going to mix in a little bit of mica, but not a regular mica that most people are used to seeing the mica color. I'm gonna use this eyeshadow from the Dollar Tree 
Believe it or not, this actually creates a mica powder as well. And it's a white shimmery eyeshadow. So it's going to really make this paint sparkle. Even though it's a pearl white, it's already sparkly. This mica paint or this mica eyeshadow added to it will just really take it up and give it the next notch of classy. So we'll mix this up really well and then we'll start just painting the entire project with this white. And on this, I just wanna make sure that I get down inside of all these grooves, inside of all the crevices to make sure the entire thing gets covered with the pearl white paint. So let's look at the difference. Here's the one that's still wet that has the pearl uh, paint on it as opposed to the one that is just totally spray painted with the Rust-Oleum white satin. Can't you see the difference in this? That is why it was so important that we add that extra layer of metallic paint. It's beautiful, but I think it just took it up the next notch by making sure we had that shimmer. And here's what they look like side by side after I've painted both of them. They're on my kitchen table because, or my dining room table because I'm not really sure if I'm gonna hang them in my office or if I wanna hang them in my family room. But aren't they beautiful? Leave me a comment down below and tell me what you think or where do you think I should place them in my house? I think these are absolutely gorgeous. They were a little bit messy but after the end of all of the mess, they were absolutely worth it. If you enjoyed this project and you like to see some other things that we created, I'm going to leave a couple of videos right here. And I hope you enjoy those as well. Until the next video, remember, stay classy. I'll see you next time.